Now in final assembly of my pedal box, I've gone through a few iterations. Uh, I've learned a ton about the 2002 pedal boxes, even some about 1602 pedal boxes. Um, what I've done with mine is I finished off the welding. Um, it turned out not too bad. And I just painted it with some pour 15. Uh, the idea there is probably in phase three or at some later date, I will get the sandblasted and powder coated once I figure out all the pedal assembly and stuff like that. So interesting fun fact about these videos is people actually watch them. Um, and sometimes people reach out to me. So Sean from the FAQ reached out to me and sent me this pedal box from a 1602, which is really cool to learn about. Um, if you're actually looking on real OEM and you're looking at all the diagrams for the parts, you're probably looking at a, an image of this uh, pedal box and it's for the 1602. So I was going to struggle with trying to figure out how to do the pedal of my setup with the uh, current 2002 pedal setup, but the 1602 uses a master cylinder straight off the back and just like the setup I did, just a smaller master cylinder, a single, a single feed. So it doesn't have the redundancy, but it's, it's there. So this one's got a small master cylinder. And uh, it, the interesting thing is it's got the mechanical clutch. So it's got the port at the back for mechanical clutch. And uh, the rest is largely the same. Um, interestingly enough, the clutch pedal between the 1602 and the 2002 hasn't really changed. It's got both the linkage for the uh, hydraulic and the linkage for the uh, mechanical built into it. The geometry hasn't changed. They didn't remove the mechanical linkage, but they did add a, a port or a hole for the hydraulic. So largely the same. Um, inside of the pedal box is a bit different uh, where everything welds together. You can see the fastening goes through the whole pedal box and you only have one um, stand up for the, for the assembly, whereas in the 1602 you got both. So pretty cool. Um, again, just the community reaching out and coming together, that's how I got this pedal box and it saved me a lot of time in figuring out the geometry for the brake pedal. Um, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna modify any of this because I believe it's becoming very rare. Um, so in the spirit of the 2002 community, if you happen to be restoring a 1602 and you're going to do a mechanical clutch and all that and are looking for a 1602 pedal box, get in touch with me, get in touch with me through the FAQ and uh, we can work something out. I'll, I will send you this um, pretty much for shipping, but I would like to see it go to a project that's going to revitalize this whole thing. So yeah, and then there's my old, uh, my original box that came with my car. It was my car's originally 1602. This is the one that came with it, and it's been hacked to pieces and all rusty, so it's, you know, can be something someday. Anyway, pretty cool stuff. So, uh, goal for today is to reassemble this. Uh, with all the parts that I've got, I'm going to walk everybody through what I've done and what choices I've made to get the, the, uh, the pedal box so it's going to work for me, uh, boosterless. And then after that, I'll install it on the car. Okay, so here's my, here's my master cylinder from a Super Beetle or a Carmen Ghia. Um, I ended up having to make a cup. I ended up having to make a cup to adapt the push rod and uh, clevis that I stole from the 1602 setup. So that worked out super perfect. Um, and we'll install this first. So we've got some hardware there for that. Um, just through the back here. The only thing I ended up doing was making this uh, little clasp here a little spring hook to hook up the spring for the return of the brake pedal. That's right here to this. So here we go.
So I don't know if you can see that in there, but I've put just a little bracket to hook the spring up off the bottom of that. And that's the return to hold the brake pedal forward off of that. Get that nice and tight. My hope is that uh, I can put all this together and slip it into the car. If anything, I'll have to remove the throttle uh, linkage assembly. All right, so next goes in the Clutch Master, and I've got a new one of these, just brand new. Uh, so it's going to go in. Got some new hardware for it as well. Some lock nuts. Okay, so Clutch Master and Brake Master are installed. Um, looking pretty good there with the new hardware. Now it's a matter of putting this pedal assembly together. So I'll try to show that as well as I can here. Um, we've got a spacer, a large nut that comes across with a wave washer, two wave washers, one there, one there. And then the tricky thing is going to be getting the uh, brake pedal spring hooked up to the bracket that I added and then everything together. So the sleeve and a bushing for the brake pedal, put that in first. And then a spacer. And same thing for the clutch is there's a sleeve and a bushing. And this spring, I haven't, I haven't taken this spring off. Um, I tried to clean up as best as can. Spacer on there, and then slip this in. There we go. And finally, a wave washer and another nut. Everything's pretty loose on this until you tighten this whole assembly up. And that's where the spacer and those bushings come in uh, to be important. Because what you're doing is you're compressing the, the, the spacer and the bushings together, but not the cylinder of the, the pedals. So there it is. And so the spring returns keep the pedals in tension which is awesome, and that little bracket's working. Uh, so brake um, is just a pin. Brake pedal comes up. Slides through. And then the clutch. I got some new bushings, so basically one slips on like that, and the other bushing comes from the other side on the push rod for the clutch master, comes through like so, and I got a new lock nut, um, again with the help of Real OEM, we'll tighten this all up. And that nut, sorry, that bolt is shouldered. So once the lock nut bottoms out, you should be all good. You got the bushing and everything feels really good with the spring. So I got nice engagement. So the last bit to install um, is the throttle linkage and got some new bushings for that, some new washers. And again, this might be something that I'm doing a little too early. Uh, I might not be able to get in the car with this, but I'm going to put it all together. And then if I have to take it off to slip in the car, I will. So 
So we get a washer here. That bushing comes through like so. This bushing from this side. Washer. Looking good. And there's a spring on this that connects here. So this comes through. There we go. Spring goes on that way because it's pushing everything back. And going like that because it's holding this closed. Not sure the angle of this. Basically, we want it somewhere in there. And we've got this to clamp it all shut. Comes through like so. Just slightly snug right now, so we get the idea. So we got the throttle. And the last bit is this plug on the pedal assembly so that we've got no water ingress there. And there we go. We got full set of pedals. Looking good. And yeah, looking pretty spiffy. I'm super happy with this. Um, again, there's some learning to be had and there will be some changes, but uh, for now, I think this is a pretty clean uh, resto mod pedal box for the boosterless conversion. So uh, eventually I'll probably change the pedals um, to do some speed holes and things like that. Um, but for now, this is great. So next steps, installing it into the car. Ha! There's no point in doing a video of me installing that. It was just a lot of me rolling around on the ground and car up and down a bit, but uh, it did go in, no problem. Um, it's already dirty from the rest of the car touching it, which is kind of a pain. Um, it just goes to show how much work the body's gonna need eventually, but for now it's in, looks really nice. Um, everything's working. Just gotta hook it up to the rest of the car. And here it is from the outside. Uh, long story short, it did have to come apart a little bit to install onto the car. Uh, I had to take the throttle assembly uh, and the pedal bar off to get it in. Then I was able to twist it in. Um, I think I may even change it a bit because my speedo cable is running on the other side of the clutch. Um, and I think it's supposed to go up through the middle from some pictures and uh, drawings that I've seen. Um, all in all though, it looks really good. I'm happy with how it is. Um, it's kind of highlighting the grunginess of the rest of the car, so that means I'm gonna have to get cleaning. Uh, but really, really happy with that install. So I've also done the steering guibo. That's all brand new. And I also got a new set of engine mounts in there, and which are great. They are super stiff and uh, Fairly easy to install. Whoa. And between uh, all the loose hardware that was on the engine mounts and uh, the terrible state that they were in with the dissolving rubber, uh, the engine is super stiff. It's basically just shaking on the springs now. So I'm really happy with that. Um, I didn't box in the engine mount yet. I will probably do that in phase three if I ever get there. Uh, just because that whole subframe has got to come out to do that properly, in my opinion. So, uh, yeah. Everything's looking good. New clutch master, new brake master, new steering guibo, new engine mounts.